Amen and amen. Welcome to Black Oak Baptist Church tonight. Trust and pray that you've had a great day. First of all, let me say thank you to Brother Curtis for filling in this morning. I did go back online and watch the service. Wonderful job by the choir and by Brother Curtis. Thank you so much. Great message this morning, Brother Matthew. You had a great time in the Lord's house this morning up in East La Follette. So you remember Dr. Davis. He's got business all this week with all the local churches. So just remember him. And we're thankful and honored to be here tonight. Thankful for the speaker we got tonight and what a blessing it is to have people like that are out on the battlefield doing work for the Lord, right? So we're going to start our service. I'm going to ask you to stand, follow along on the screen. This is for him tonight. I will serve thee. That's what we're here to do tonight, right? Serve the Lord. Follow along on the screen. serve you because I love you you have given life to me I was nothing before you found me you have given I won't mess it up right there. I can throw the words up for one more time. Here we go. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given song then we're going to step out in fellowship when we all get to heaven
Amen. Brother Rocky and Brother Tony are going to play. You step out, shake someone's hand, make them feel welcome now. Would you do that? Grab you a seat tonight. If you're glad you're saved, say amen. 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 If you're glad you're on your way to heaven, say amen. 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 The Bible said that eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. I'm glad that I'm on my way to that city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Special night. Uh, we're excited to have Brother Tim Underwood with us from the Gideons. He's going to share their ministry and whatever the Lord has placed on his heart tonight. So I want you to pray for him. Uh, before he comes tonight, I just want to see if maybe you've got a prayer request. I want to ask you to pray for Brother John Davis. Uh, he went. He asked for the church to pray. He went to the hospital by ambulance at 4 o'clock. I was over at his house. He was having chest pain, so they're checking to see if he had a heart attack or anything. So you... You pray for him tonight, okay? Any other requests we need to pray for? Okay. Pray for this. Pray for Brother John Miller's having surgery Tuesday, Brother Paul. Is that right? Pray for that, having surgery on his shoulder. Any others we need to pray for tonight? Amen. Amen. Miss Patsy. this. Any others tonight? Yeah. Pray for that. Amen. 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 Pray for this. Amen. Okay. 
pray for the Hutchinson family. Anybody else tonight need prayer? Kelly? Amen. Yeah, continue to remember Kelly's whole family in this time. Anybody else? Anybody have a lost person on your heart tonight that needs Jesus? Unspoken on your heart? Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, I thank you for this, Lord, great opportunity and privilege we have, Lord, to be in your house tonight. God, thank you for this place on the hill, God, that you have constructed and set aside for us to come and to worship you freely. God, thank you for the service this morning. Lord, thank you that, Lord, your word is encouraging, but God, sometimes your word corrects us and leads us in the right direction. And God, we thank you for that, that it, we can rightly divide the word of truth tonight. And Father, I pray for every one of the requests that have been made mention tonight, Lord, I, I would forget them, Lord, if on this moment I tried to mention all of them, Lord, but you know those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of comfort, and Father, those who are in need of salvation, most of all tonight, we lift to your throne, and Father, we thank you that you are still alive and still sitting on the throne tonight. And God, we just thank you that you're making intercession for us. And I pray that you would just meet these needs. God, I pray you'd bless our speaker as he's coming tonight. That you would, Lord, help us to have attentive ears and hearts. Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, about the need for the gospel in this day and this hour. Lord, thank you for salvation full and free. Thank you for rescuing us, Lord, and giving us a home in heaven. Lord, we love you tonight. And we pray in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. You pray for Brother Tim. You come speak to us, whatever the Lord's given you, brother. telling the pastor that uh, when I was a Gideon and got my uh, certification, sort of to say, to, to be a Gideon a presenter, this church was the first one in Anderson County that I had a presentation at. Years ago, it's probably about eight years ago, I don't remember exactly, but uh, it's a pleasure to be back and get to speak to you and uh, tell you a bit about uh, our uh, work and uh, first of all, um, I'm a camp president for Anderson County Camp. Uh, two years ago, we had a consolidation with Clinton and Oak Ridge Camps. And uh, also, uh, I was Area 12 director uh, for four and a half years. I asked to resign from that this year because I had so much going on. And there's so much going on in our county right now. And I thought, uh, the camp needed me uh, to give more uh, effort and work there as president. I tried to get them to uh, go ahead and uh, maybe uh, try to toss me out like they wanted to do Trump, but uh, I can't get them to agree to it. So um, I've been president since uh, 2010. But uh, that's a blessing for me. And uh, let's, uh, let me lead a prayer right now before I go into my presentation. Oh Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the members, those that are visitors or present. We pray your guidance and direction on my uh, presentation tonight. May it be a blessing to others and uh, may we honor and glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Gideon's basically, we're just professional businessmen. We're born again Christians and uh, we're layman and our soul a purpose is to get the distribution of God's word out to others. And uh, basically there's uh, 250,000, a few over of that number throughout the world, and we've got uh, a little over uh, 12,000 camps. Uh, we first started giving out scriptures in uh, 1908, and since that time we've given out uh, over 2.4 billion in 201 countries and 107 languages. And the way things go right now, I have to wonder if maybe uh, uh, it's the end times and we need to get that word out to others right. as they reach salvation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I consider Anderson County our Jerusalem. That's where we start and that's where we'll always start as long as I'm president. From there, we go to Tennessee, and that would be our Judea. Samaria would be the USA, which certainly needs God's word right now. We need revival, and then, of course, uh, the rest of the world. So, and that being said, we're members of local churches. 
Uh, Robin and I have lived here for 16 years. We moved from Jefferson County, and uh, that's the, mostly the way that I've met people because for years I worked at Panasonic in uh, Knoxville, and so I was going back and forth between Knox County too much and not staying here. But uh, 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 we're an extension of local churches, and we bring uh, our uh, word and our work to you so that you might uh, understand better what we do. And our main base that we use and the reason we take God's word out is because of his promise. You know, I wonder, there's promises in God's word in the Bible that he promises us. And I wonder, sometimes I think, well, I don't think of that enough. And, but the promise that we focus on is Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that for go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sin it. So we can rely on that, don't we? It makes me always think of that Fanny Crosby, blessed assurance. We have that assurance through Christ. We basically distribute uh, Bibles out in highways and byways of life. We give out Bibles uh, and Testaments in schools and universities. We do UT every year, uh, the first Monday in October, and typically give out 11 to 12,000 testaments there. Uh, we get put them, and you've probably seen them in hotels and motels. We put them in schools and universities. We give them uh, also in uh, hospitals, convalescent homes, dental and, and medical offices. So I'm sure you've seen that. And uh, I've got little samples here. This is a, a personal uh, Gideon uh, Bible that we use and, and I carry them with me and Robin carries these. These are for the auxiliary and ladies and it's called the personal worker's testimony. If we're out somewhere we see someone that seems to need, uh, we feel led that needs uh, the word of God then we'll give that to them. And this red one right here is the one that typically goes, and you may have gotten one uh, adults when you were younger but it's the one you put we give out in fifth grades or elementary school so there's three I did have one other one and I can't keep it I had a one that had the was combat camouflage scripture and every time I get one and take with me I have a veteran that says I lost mine can I have that <laughs> there's uh but we give them out to to our armed forces that that being said I want to give you an example of how the scripture works. Because, see, we can't do it without the help of the churches. For, through prayer, through giving us donations, through being behind us. And this year really touched me because it's about a man named Philip Lombardi in Connecticut. And Robin's family is from Connecticut, moved down here. To, uh, when they were having the nuclear uh, uh, bomb being made and other things after that. So, but more than that, we also do here in Anderson County detention center ministry. And when you go in there and you talk to those men and women that have made mistakes and gone down the wrong road, this is a story about that. You see, Philip Lombardi when he was 12, was introduced to marijuana. And 85 to 90 percent of the men and women in the detention center are there because they've got on the wrong track for drugs. So you young people remember that. Don't let anybody take you aside and off track. When he was 17, he was tossed out of school. He was expelled, and shortly thereafter, he was arrested and convicted for drug possession. Not long after that, he continued down the wrong road. He got in with a street gang. And <clears throat> one night in Chalet Inn in Hartford, Connecticut, he believed he was dying from a bad dose of drugs. And he looked over on the nightstand and he saw a Gideon Bible. And he picked it up and started to read it. And on the, the inside cover, someone had written, Read John chapter 14. John chapter 14 has a verse 9 in it. It says, Have I been with you so long, and you have
have not known me, Philip? And he read that and he realized God wanted him to make a decision between God and Satan. And he decided to accept Jesus Christ as his, his Lord and Savior. And he got up, he flushed his reserved amphetamines down the toilet. He took off his street jacket and he never put it on again. He left his old friends behind, the ones that were run with. He got his first real job days later and became an honest citizen. He joined the Bible-believing church. And in 1980, he went to Bible college and taught Bible in Connecticut prisons. In 1995, he helped start inner city, inner city outreach to reach young people for uh, help to keep them out of trouble, and he became president in 1999. And this is his testimony. I was a hopeless case that night in the Chalet Inn. I heard everyone who ever loved me and was a modern day outlaw. God reached down from heaven and set me free. To God, to God be the glory for the great things. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we need to do is take out God's word to lead them down the right path. And you know what? In three weeks, I go into Woodland Park at Oak Ridge, Woodland Park Baptist Church. Robin and I were um, there and, uh, for about uh, two and a half years. And I was a deacon. I gave that presentation and told him that. And he pulled me aside. He said, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. He said, just a few years ago, my brother-in-law went into a hotel <laughs> at Maribel with a gun. He was going to kill himself. He was going to commit suicide. And on that test, he said he saw a Gideon te Testament. And he picked it up and read it. He walked out a new man, a Christian, instead of a dead man with a gun. That sort of hit close to home, because I, I respected and thought a lot of that guy, and I could tell how, how it touched him that that Gideon Bible brought salvation to him in more than one way. I didn't really realize the scope of our work and the testaments and how important they were. But when I was first I, over Area 12 here, five counties, I ha had to go to our state convention quarterly meeting. And the first time I went to it, a man named Kevin Keck, that's in this Sevier County uh, camp. He was also the state president. And he said, don't. He said, we're going to pray. And if you're not here to serve God and to reach people for Christ, you need to get up and leave. He told us that. Every cabinet member, 16 of us. And then he told us the story that why he was there. See, he went on an international mission to Colombia. Sometimes I think we take it, we, we don't realize the importance of God's word that we have. If you're like me, you probably have two or three Bibles, maybe four or five at home. He flew into Colombia and he said the Colombian camps had all gotten all everything organized. They had testaments to go to the police, testaments to go to the military, testaments to go to the schools. And he got assigned to the school that first day. And he went there. And he said they were giving them out to kids. 
and a little 12 year old girl come up to him and ask for a testament <laughs> and this is why it impacted me the importance of it he said he reached in his pocket and he didn't have one and there wasn't one down in the, the testament case there and he went over to another friend of his the Gideon that was in that room and he didn't have one and the little girl started crying The teacher started crying. They went up to the principal's office, and other groups were coming in, and they'd run out, and kids were crying, and the principals were crying. And you know why? Because they knew this was hope, and they weren't going to get hope. You see? They might not have had enough food that day. They might not have had a roof over their head, but they weren't going to get hope. Kevin said he went back to the hotel where they were staying, and he told the group leader, said, I can't do this. He said, kids were crying. Adults were crying. He said, I can't do that. And you know what the leader told him? He pointed at him and said, if you don't do it, he will. And that's the way it is. As Christians, if we don't do it, he will. So, I've got another one to tell you in a few minutes. I'm just going to try not to run over, keep my mouth running. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you the one more. This is from Malawi, Africa. I'll try to make it quick. You see, Malawi, East Africa is a very poor place, very poor, poor country in Africa. And they had an international uh, distribution there. And they had gone to five schools in this, this district. But there was one school that was way out, we'd call it way out in the sticks if we were from Tennessee. And they couldn't get to it with a car, so they had to have the district education office call them and tell them, uh, if you're not here, if you don't meet them at the district office, you can't, they won't be back for another year. So they got up, they put on bikes and motorcycles, they put Gideon Testaments on it, and they drove into the, where the dis, uh, that district education office was, and they got there about 7.30, and about two hours later they could see a bunch of kids coming. There were three teachers with them. When they got there, the teacher said, do you mind if we sat down and let them rest for about 30 minutes? And in that 30 minutes, they found out that those kids had walked what was 20 miles to get there. They had got up at 3 a.m. that morning, and most of them were 13 or under. They ended up giving out 900 or excuse me, 874 Chickawa New Testaments in their language. I don't know how long you've ever walked, but I've never walked 21 miles to give somebody a testament. But that's how important it was to them. Well, thanks be to God that those little kids come and got that. They had... It says they, our testament, and what I got from the Gideon magazine was that they had two plastic bags, one that had some food in for them and another one to stick that little testament in and keep it clean. And thanks be to God that he's made <laughs> that work possible, and he's made it because of men and women like you. So I'm going to ask Robin to come up here, my wife. She's the one that keeps me in line. And uh, <laughs> uh, she's going to tell you about the Gideon Card Ministry, where uh, you can uh, sign cards and send it to loved ones. You can send it to maybe uh, you want to send it to a, a, a young uh, man or woman that's graduated, because that's what they are. They're going in to their maturity, 
And uh, sometimes, I even sent one to her one time that thanked her for all that she did. I think she was surprised about that. It looked like she nearly fell out of the seat. But I sent her one, and she's going to tell you about uh, that giving card ministry. Yes, ma'am. I did learn one thing about the giving cards. We went to uh, Bethel Baptist Church when we first moved here and got situated. And uh, the older ladies class always sent cards out when someone had passed away. And for some way, it, the card rack got empty with that in memory. And I got a phone call. Told me I better get that rack filled back up with the, in memory. So I said, I'll bring some to you. I'll meet you down, uh, down there at uh, McDonald's and, and give it to you. But boy, I got a lesson there. Of course, she was happy once they got it. But yeah, I didn't realize that that many had gone that quick, but they always sent one out. Does anyone want to hear one more testimony? This is one. This was sent in by Dennis Donnelly a few years ago. And I don't I haven't used this for a while, but it's, I think it's an amazing one. He had been, at first, he had been down at uh, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to the state Mississippi uh, convention, annual convention, and he was assigned to speak at First Presbyterian Church in Hattiesburg. And so they had, they had been supporting a missionary in Malawi, East Africa, for several years. I'm going to have to read a little bit of this because it's been a while, but it's, it's a good one. They wanted him to speak first, the missionary, and then they were going to give him 10 minutes. You see, it starts at Webb City, Missouri, small frontier town. Vernon Spencer was born there in 1908. His family moved to New Mexico, and... Uh, the Spencer family lived there, and then a few years later, they moved up to a mining town, Oklahoma town called Pish, Pinscher. And a few years later, it was a rough and tumble place, and uh, they, of course, it was a mining uh, area, so they got uh, in the mine and did the work and made their uh, pay and so forth from there. Vernon Spencer got in it, and he, he got hurt uh, in an accident, got his back hurt. So 
he had an idea of being a musician and going out to California. So he took a train to Hollywood, California, found a job at a Safeway uh, uh, store, and on nights and weekends, he'd go out and he'd go out to country shows, clubs, dance halls, any place he thought he could make an inroad and become a musician. Soon he met a couple of men. One was named Leonard Sly from Ohio, and the other was named Bob Nolan. The three of them put together and became a, a group called the Pioneer Trio. Some of you may have remembered that. Said uh, Vern, Vernon's uh, father uh, not, nicknamed him Tim. So he took that on and he became uh, Tim Spencer. And his buddy that worked there with him named Leonard Sly said, what kind of name is that for a musician? So he changed his name to Roy Rogers. And they became Sons of the Pioneers, one of the most popular country music western group of all time. And they would go on these big trips, you know, they'd go out going all over the country. And Tim Spencer's wife, when he came home, would try to get him to go to church. He'd say, I'm too tired. He'd make excuses, didn't want to go, didn't want to hear what she had to say. Didn't, you know, she, he'd had enough. So Velma, his wife, went to Hollywood Presbyterian Church. That's where she went. And she talked to the pastor and said, I can't get him to come. He's, he's traveled on the road. He's tired when he gets home. He tells me that he's had enough. He doesn't want to hear it. I said, what can I do? She said, he said, well, why don't you make an agreement with him that you can send him a letter everywhere he goes along that trip where they circle the country? And he said, you can write it and send it to him. And that's what she started doing. Every place he was supposed to go. And she always put a scripture. Well, they checked in to Hazleton, Pennsylvania in 1949, and he had a card waiting for him. He opened it up, and he read it, and the scripture that night gripped him. So he saw a Gideon Bible there in Hazleton in that hotel, and he picked it up, and he read it, and he gave his life to Christ that night. We're talking about a man that wrote great stuff songs for country music room full of roses that mickey gilly come back and sang again in 1974 and it was number one in the country he also had become popular with the next song that he wrote cigarettes whiskey and wild wild women but he read that and it changed his life and he gave like i said his life to christ Tim Spencer soon went into the music publishing business, and in 1953, his son Hal was at a youth conference. And at that youth conference, he heard a melody. And he asked the leader of the conference, said, uh, can I uh, get a copy of that and take it back to my father? He might be interested in it. Took it back to him, and he started working with a guy that had uh, provided the tune. Uh, it was a Swedish melody, and his, uh, I'm trying to see the guy, find the guy's name here. Um, I don't read, but he, he worked with that, that man, uh, Stuart Hine was his name. And they put that song together. A few different groups uh, sang it, and in 1957, George Beverly Shea sung How Great Thou Art 99 times in Madison Square Garden in the Billy Graham Crusade. And it said, how many times and how many people has that touched for Christ? A man that wrote whiskey, cigarettes, and wild, wild women put out a song with Man of Music, and if you look in that, your hymn book, 
you'll see at the bottom of that page, Stuart Hines. And what a man of music. So he, he was thinking, Donaldson was thinking and saying, okay, I hear this. It's one of the greatest songs in Christendom. And he said, what does it have to do with Malawi? South Africa. That Bible in a hotel room. What's the connection? Then the ministry, men, uh, missionary answered the question. He said, I've been a missionary in Malawi for 19 years telling people about Jesus because my grandfather, Tim Spencer, read a Bible in a hotel room and was saved. He told me about Jesus. The missionary's name was Dr. Stephen Spencer, academic dean with the African Bible College in Longway, Malawi, East Africa. Amazingly, people are still coming to know Jesus, their personal Savior, because of a Gideon Bible placed, placed in a hotel. Thanks be to God. So that's what I would have to say for you. You know, I've often wondered if one of our great rewards in heaven will be when we get there and Jesus shows us what impact we made on people here, what difference we made. And as a church, I think and pray that we continue to take God's word out. And on that note, I'm just going to say a couple more things and close up. It's a pleasure to be here to be a part of God's people. And I take great pleasure in being a Tennessee and not just a volunteer because of UT. But I used to, I, I'm a big fan, but more importantly, we're area eight, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky. In the United States, we're considered area eight. We're not the biggest states. We might even not be the richest states. Thanks be to God for people like you. A year ago, we had given more donations and provided more money for Bibles and Testament than any area in the country. Thanks be to God. Makes me glad to be a volunteer. So, ending up here, what can you do? Support us with prayer first. Let doors stay open. Money keeps coming in to help us buy the uh, scriptures. You know, 100% of that, it doesn't go for us at all. If I go somewhere to give distribution, I pay my own trip. When we do it here. You probably saw us giving uh, testaments out at the Clinton Antique Festival. We, we just gave out 109 because we've given out five, 600 before. And I think a lot of people say, oh, I've got one or two of those already. But what about those 109 that need it? So anyway, it's a pleasure to be here, but keep us in prayer. You can support us with offering, of course, and you, you know that and have done it for many years. Or if you're a professional businessman and want to help distribute testaments and become a Gideon, feel free to contact me or see me after uh, uh, the pre uh, this presentation's over, and I'll be glad to... Uh, uh, lead you in, in uh, making and signing off an application and so forth. And it's a pleasure to work with you, you folks and to be a part of the ministry of God. Thank you. God bless you, Brother Tim. Thank you for sharing. Can I just close the service today in the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Brother Tommy, will you help me on this piano? I just want to have a moment of reflection, I, I have nothing to add to that, nothing to share tonight about that. But I, some of those testimonies that you can, we can tell they've touched your heart, and and those touch my heart tonight. I, I mean, how often do you get out of bed in the morning? I, brother, I've probably got twenty Bibles on my shelf at home, and I've probably got about twenty more on my shelf over there. But how often do we get out of bed in the morning? We've got it. Are you glad for your Bible tonight? 
we can get in it as much as we want to. But it breaks my heart to know, like them little kids, there's people who just want it. Many a times I've seen Gideon Bibles in hotels and different places and venues and events. But I wonder tonight, just in a moment of reflection, could we all bow our heads and close our eyes? I, I won't invite you to come. If you feel you need to use these altars, you're welcome to. But just right where you are, could you just thank God for your Bible tonight? Could you just ask the Lord to help you to cherish it a little bit more? And most of all, would you pray for this ministry tonight? How our world needs the Word of God. Why, preacher, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. America needs a Bible today. Would you just say, Lord, thank you for my Bible. But would you pray that more children, more adults could be reached? Maybe there's somebody right now in a hotel room that's on the brink of decision and there's a Gideon Bible laying on the table. I don't know, but maybe there is. Would you ask God to use this ministry? Father, I thank you tonight for this just this sweet time in your house. Lord, I thank you for your man that you've sent tonight, Lord, and his wife that have come to share part of their ministry. And God, we thank you to hear and to rejoice of how you are using this ministry. And God, how you're using them to fulfill the great commission. But Lord, we would be forgetting tonight if we didn't say thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Lord, I thank you for the Bible that I'm holding in my hand right now. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us as your church, God, to cherish the Word of God even more after these testimonies tonight. But Father, we pray for those tonight, Lord, that don't have access to your Word. God, we pray that in some form or fashion that you would use this ministry, God, to pave a way. Lord, that they might receive your Word. God, we pray you to just apply and ab supply an abundance of what they need, Father, in the days ahead. And Father, for this love offering that we're going to take up for this ministry in just a moment, God, we pray you'd bless it. And God, we pray you'd use it, stretch it, and make it go far. God, for this ministry tonight, Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brother Roger, you can't come. I want to sing How Great Thou Art. Can we do that? Somebody help me find the offering place. We're going to take up a love offering tonight. Brother, do they need to make the checks out to Gideon Ministry? Gideon International? Okay, if you make a check out, we're going to do Gideon International. You give cash tonight however the Lord leads you. Let's stand and sing how great thou art. And as we do, I'm going to find the offering plates. Somebody help me find those tonight. We'll take up a love offering. Give me a few deacons to help me once we get those up here tonight. Great thou 
coming and sharing your ministry with us tonight. Can we thank him again Amen. for coming and sharing with us tonight? Amen. 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 You're welcome back here anytime. Amen. We will certainly support you in prayer in any way we can, uh, just to get God's word in one more person's hands. Amen. 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 Let me just remind us tonight just of a few things before uh, we go home. Uh, remember, uh, homecoming will be June 5th. Um, Judy, when are we putting out that sign-up sheet? For It's already out there, okay, already on the back table, so you can uh, sign up. I know all Baptists like to eat. I know we all own a crock pot. We've got about three or four, so you make something good, and we'll come and we'll worship together. Who do we have coming to sing? Homecoming? Kingdom? It's the, it's the old, original Kingdom Airs, but it's, it's called... Knoxville Southern, I forget the name. Amen, amen. Yeah. amen. We're going to come worship the Lord together in that, so you remember that. Uh, remember, I failed to mention this today. Uh, Kelly started, and David started a new Bible study tonight, and that went well. That'll be every Sunday, right? Um, so you, I, I've done the study at home before, and I'm going to be in there the nights that I can. Uh, so you support that at 4.30. It's in Brother Ralph's Sunday school room. And I know Brother Curtis is next door, but I'll grab him. If you're on the finance committee, I need to meet with you for just a minute in the conference room. It'll only take about five minutes, okay? All hearts and minds clear. Anybody got anything on your heart before we go home? All the time. Amen. God is good. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Let these testimonies encourage your heart this week to share Jesus with somebody. If you've got an extra Bible to give them, you, you give them that Bible. If not, just share the living word with them. And God might change their life because he's able to. You That's believe right. that tonight? Amen. Amen. We'll see you Wednesday night for service at 6 o'clock. Remember, our prayer meeting has been moved from Thursday morning to Wednesday morning at 9. So you come and join us in prayer. I love you, church. I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you. Have a good week. God bless you. Make sure to shake Brother Tim's hand on the way out. and Thank him tonight Amen. for coming. Amen.